Hey everyone, thanks for tuning back into my YouTube channel. Today I'm sitting at the tackle table and I want to go over a little DIY trick that you can do to your extra wide gap hook to help you hook and land more fish and lose less of those big ones with your wider body style baits. If you have a problem with losing some fish with your wider style baits, this little trick could be the deal for you. When I started flipping and pitching, I think a lot of guys initially went with extra wide gap hooks. The hooks like this that had those really wide bends, these wide body hooks, that was basically the hook that was the go-to for all flipping. Punching, heavy braid, heavy fluorocarbon, flipping and pitching brush, lay downs, weaves, just whatever. And in recent years, a lot of people have transitioned to a straight shank hook, and I have as well. But there are times when an extra wide gap hook is something to go to, and I recognize that not everybody, a lot of top pros, I'm talking about top 20 percenters, you know, big name pros, still really like an extra wide gap hook. And I say that not because I think they're wrong. I just realize that there's a difference of opinion no matter what it is. Some people say crank with fiberglass. Some people say crank with graphite. Some people say got to snow your hook when flipping. Some people say no, you don't. Other people say the best knot in the world is the Palomar. Other people say, you know, Eugene slip knot like I do. Or a San Diego jam is the best with fluorocarbons. There's always going to be debates in fishing. And this is one of them, whether it's straight shank or an extra wide gap hook. For guys that really like an extra wide gap hook, I really like this one. This one's the, uh, the jungle wide gap. Silky gray finish, which is like basically like Teflon. This one also comes with a sealed eye, incredibly sharp needlepoint hook. And one of the things I think that makes this hook great is, as far as rigging heavier, thicker, soft plastic baits is this bend here. This elbow here, you basically have like a Z bend where some of them are just straight angles. Bait wants to slide right off of there and create ball ups. If the bait slides down that hook, but it actually kicked that bait up on top and what you essentially end up having is a lost fish. Let me demonstrate that. You get a bite. You set the hook and initially the point pops through and you get the business end exposed. But what can happen is because of the, the pressure of the fish's mouth like this, he's going to slide that down. And that's the beauty of this. It just wants to stay right there. But sometimes it slides past that. That plastic wants to kick up. And sometimes what you end up getting is that scenario right there where you bury your hook back into the plastic and that's usually ends up in a lost fish specifically with tubes i know a lot of guys quit throwing tubes because they lost too many fish on them beaver style baits like these striking rodents your hog type baits like this striking rage hog these types of baits have a tendency to want to ball up on the hook and i think you get away from that with a straight shank but again i also know that not everybody feels that way there's some incredibly successful fishermen that really like that extra wide gap and i i don't blame them it, it's it's a it's a great mousetrap however getting into it i make this little keeper that is not my design it's not my idea i saw other guys i learned from somebody else just like i'm about to share with you guys a way to make this little diy keeper that i think would be great if you like extra wide gap hook you can put them on a straight chain hook for that matter the first thing you're going to need some stainless steel wire got this one at bass pro shops it's 80 pound. I think you want something pretty rigid. It's something lighter. It has a tendency to bend a little bit more. I don't think that works as well when you're making these keepers. The next thing, like a two or three inch long piece, take your diagonal cutters. You're going to need some diagonal cutters, some pliers, and, and, and then hooks. That's all you're going to need for this. So the first thing you're going to do is take this wire, put it through the top side of the hook or the business side. I say this is the top side, this is the bottom side. This is really similar to how I do Wacky Worm Hook Weed Guard DIY. If you haven't seen that, this that's a pretty good trick too, using these wires to make weed guards for your wacky hooks. Check that out. That was I did that a while back and uh, it's definitely worth a watch if you haven't seen it already. Same basic setup. You're putting it this wire through the eye. What I want to do is take this short end or the bottom end here and wrap it around this section, this little offset section right here, right before the Z bend. But I want to get it up as high as I can and just wrapping it around. So just wrapping it around that shank, wrapping it around that shank, just like that. You can take your pliers 
or you can start with your pliers, whichever is easiest for you. And take that wire with your pliers, kind of grab it like this, and then you just start spinning the hook. And you want to keep these wraps as close together as possible. I just think it makes it a, just a better overall presentation. Wrap it around, get about four or five wraps, and that's pretty much all, all you need to do there. Then you want to cut off this little, this little piece here, the little tag end, so to speak. Try to grab that tag in when I'm cutting it, or cover it, cover my, cover your eyes. That thing will shoot out, hit you in the eye. If you drop it on the floor, if you're walking around barefooted, that'll also won't feel very good. I stabbed myself earlier with a piece of wire. Once you cut that, there's still a little burr hanging out there. I just go ahead and mash that down. I try to slide it up the shank toward the eye, just kind of accordion that whole thing. Push it up there, nice. And so basically that's what you've got so far. And then you're going to take this piece and bend it over. Just straight over on top as much as possible. I've got to say that. You want it definitely over the very apex of the hook eye. And then you want to kind of like measure it right about there, kind of in line with the shank. And right past where that elbow is is where you want to put a little bend in it not much more just i mean just just past it again remember there's not a whole lot that's too specific about this is just kind of a diy backyard in the boat hook keeper design kind of like that just past the elbow and take this longer piece and wrap it back up like that so i basically wrapped it around the shank of the hook, and then you just cut off this piece. I mean, that's it, you're done. That's my little DIY, I say my, I learned it from somebody else. I think the very first time I saw it was Jason Quinn. Eagle Claw makes a little hook clip like this called the HP clip, and that's the first person that's ever made it. It's like a Shaw Grigsby HP clip hook. You want to save yourself some time and you like to tinker like I do, uh, just get some of this 80 pound wire and you can do this. Really simple. And then, and some will, you'll come out a lot better than others and some will, will just be nice and tight. And see, like it springs out. As soon as I let it go, it springs out. And then you just go ahead and rig your plastic like you would anything. So you just run your plastic right up, right up that shank right up on that eye, put your clip on underneath there, and then just rig your plastic like you normally would. Just like that. Basically what that little wire does is it keeps your plastic from coming around and sliding up over that elbow, causing it to ball up over the point. This comes through the cover really well, but that's basically it. That's all it is. It's just a small little DIY, something you could do for yourself. You could make these in the boat if you needed three or four of them really quick in the middle of a tournament. You probably don't want to do that. I'd do it the night before, but this is something that you can do real quick and it helps you hook and land more fish, in my opinion, because it keeps that bait from sliding down over that shank. So again, this is not a debate over the, the straight shank hook or the extra wide gap hook, what's better. I believe it's a personal preference thing. For me, it's a straight chain cook. For, for a lot of guys, it's that extra wide gap. I won't argue with it. I say if it works for you, keep doing it. But this is something that could add a few more fish to your boat over the course of, course of a few fishing trips. Try it out, see if you like it. I hope you do. If it helps, um, great. I just wanted to share that with you guys. I appreciate you guys watching my videos. This is uh, something that I have a lot of fun with, sharing all these different ideas. Going to continue to try to kick out some content. That's my little DIY hook keeper for extra wide gap hooks. You can use them for straight shanks if you want. Thanks for watching. Good fishing.